That sore on your foot could be more dangerous than you think. Every 30 seconds, someone loses a limb due to diabetes complications, and diabetic foot ulcers are often the starting point. My name is Dr. Andrew Schneider, and I'm a podiatrist in Houston, Texas, with over 25 years experience treating diabetic patients. Every day in my practice, I see patients who thought they just had a stubborn cut or sore, only to discover they're dealing with something far more serious. But before we get started, I've written a comprehensive book about diabetic foot ulcers, and I'd like to send it to you completely free. You can get your copy at www.footulcerbook.com. Also, please like this video, hit the subscribe button, and share it on social media. This information could help someone you care about avoid a devastating complication. Here's something that might shock you. Having a diabetic foot ulcer is actually more deadly than most cancers. Only lung and pancreatic cancer have worse five-year survival rates. This isn't meant to scare you. It's meant to help you understand why we need to take these wounds seriously from the very beginning. I hear this phrase almost daily in my office. Doctor, I had this cut that just won't heal. But here's what most people don't understand. A diabetic foot ulcer is fundamentally different from a regular cut or wound. It's not just bad luck or poor healing, it's actually a result of a perfect storm of factors that diabetes creates in your body. One of the biggest misconceptions I encounter is that diabetic wounds are simply slow healing cuts. Patients often tell me they've been treating their ulcer like any other injury, maybe putting some antibiotic ointment on it, covering it with a band-aid and waiting for it to get better. But this approach can actually be dangerous because diabetic foot ulcers require specialized care and attention. Another common and dangerous misconception is that if it doesn't hurt, it's not serious. This is perhaps the most dangerous belief of all. In fact, the absence of pain in a diabetic foot ulcer is often a sign that the condition is more advanced, not less serious. The lack of pain occurs because diabetes has damaged the nerves in your feet, a condition called peripheral neuropathy. This nerve damage is exactly why many patients don't notice ulcers until they become serious. You might step on something sharp and not feel it. You might develop a blister from ill-fitting shoes and be completely unaware. You could have a small cut that gradually gets worse, and because there's no pain signal reaching your brain, you don't know to take action. I've had patients come into my office with ulcers that have been present for weeks or even months without realizing it. They only discovered the wound during a routine foot inspection or when someone else pointed it out to them. By that time, what started as a minor issue has often progressed to a, something much more serious. So what exactly is a diabetic foot ulcer? Simply put, it's an open wound or sore that occurs in approximately 15% of patients with diabetes. These ulcers are typically located on the bottom of the foot, though they can occur anywhere on the foot or the lower leg. Think of it as a hole in the skin and soft tissue that refuses to heal properly due to the complications that diabetes creates in your body. But not all diabetic foot ulcers are the same. We actually classify them into three main types based on their underlying cause. And understanding these differences is important for both prevention and treatment. First, there are neuropathic ulcers. These are caused primarily by nerve damage. And when you can't feel pressure, pain, or temperature changes in your feet, you're more likely to injure yourself without even knowing it. These ulcers typically develop over pressure point areas where your foot bears weight when you walk. The constant pressure combined with the inability to feel discomfort creates the perfect condition for skin breakdown. Second, we have ischemic ulcers. These develop primarily due to poor blood circulation. When your feet don't receive adequate blood flow, even minor injuries struggle to heal. These ulcers often appear on the edges of the foot, the tips of the toes, or over bony prominences, where the skin is thinner and more vulnerable. Third, there are neuroischemic ulcers, which are actually the most common type I see in my practice. These ulcers result from both a combination of both nerve damage and poor circulation. They're often the most challenging to treat because we're dealing with multiple underlying problems simultaneously. What makes diabetic foot ulcers different from other wounds? Several factors set them apart. First, they occur in the context of compromised healing ability. Diabetes affects your body's natural healing processes in multiple ways. High blood sugar levels 
interfere with white blood cell function, making it harder for your body to fight off infection. Diabetes also affects the formation of new blood vessels, which are crucial for bringing nutrients and oxygen to healing tissue. Additionally, diabetic foot ulcers often occur in areas of repeated pressure or friction. Unlike a cut on your hand that you can easily protect and rest, foot ulcers are located in areas that, you, that bear your body weight every time you take a step. This constant pressure can prevent healing and actually make the ulcer worse over time. Understanding how diabetes increases your risk of developing foot ulcers is crucial for prevention. Diabetes affects your feet through three main mechanisms, and often all three are working together to create the perfect conditions for an ulcer to develop. The first mechanism is nerve damage or peripheral neuropathy. High blood sugar levels over time damage the nerves in your feet and legs. This damage typically starts in your toes and gradually progresses upward. The result is a loss of sensation. You can't feel pain, pressure, temperature, or vibration as well as you should. Think about how important these sensations are for protecting your feet. Pain tells you when something is wrong. Pressure sensations help you distribute your weight evenly when you walk. Temperature sensations prevent you from burning your feet in hot water. When these protective mechanisms are compromised, your feet become vulnerable to injury. The second mechanism is poor circulation, often known as peripheral arterial disease. Diabetes damages blood vessels throughout your body, including the small arteries that supply your feet. When blood flow is reduced, you don't receive adequate oxygen and nutrients. This not only makes injuries more likely to occur, but also significantly impairs your body's ability to heal when injuries do happen. Poor circulation also affects your immune system's ability to fight infection. White blood cells and other infection-fighting components of your blood can't reach the site of injury as effectively as when circulation is compromised. The third mechanism involves the immune system. Diabetes affects your immune system in several ways. High blood sugar impairs white blood cell function, making it harder for your body to fight off bacteria and other pathogens. Diabetes also affects the production of growth factors and other substances that are essential for wound healing. Here's something that might surprise you. Every point your hemoglobin A1C rises above normal doesn't just decrease your healing ability by a small amount, it actually reduces it by 10 times. Not 10%, 10 times. That means if your A1C is just 1.2 points high, your healing ability is reduced by 1,000%. This is why controlling your blood sugar isn't just about preventing complications, it's about giving your body the best chance to heal if problems develop. Now let's talk about where and how ulcers commonly form. Diabetic foot ulcers don't just appear randomly. They typically develop in predictable locations based on pressure and friction patterns. The most common location is on the bottom of the foot, particularly under the big toe and the ball of the foot. These areas bear significant weight when you walk, and if you have nerve damage, you might not feel when pressure becomes excessive. Over time, this repeated pressure causes skin to break down and form an ulcer. The heel is another common location, especially for people who spend a lot of time in bed or sitting. Pressure from lying down or resting your heel on the footrests can cause ulcers to develop in this area. Between the toes is also a frequent site for ulcers, particularly if you have foot deformities that cause your toes to rub against each other. Moisture and friction in these tight spaces create ideal conditions for skin breakdown. Foot deformities play a significant role in ulcer formation. Conditions like bunions, hammer toes, and claw toes create abnormal pressure points on your feet. When you have these deformities combined with nerve damage, you're at a higher risk of developing ulcers. Calluses are another important factor that many people don't fully understand. While calluses are your body's natural way of protecting areas of increased pressure in diabetic patients, they can actually hide developing ulcers underneath. I've seen many cases where what appears to be a simple callus actually has an ulcer lurking beneath it. This is why it's so important for diabetic patients to have calluses evaluated and treated by a podiatrist rather than trying to remove them at home. This brings us to why these ulcers are so dangerous. The combination of nerve damage, poor circulation, and compromised immune function creates a perfect storm for serious complications. The most immediate danger is infection. When you have an open wound and your immune system isn't functioning optimally, bacteria can easily invade the tissue. What starts as a simple surface infection can quickly progress to deeper tissues. 
Cellulitis is a common complication where the infection spreads to the surrounding skin and soft tissue. You might notice redness, warmth, and swelling around the ulcer. This requires immediate antibiotic treatment. If the infection continues to progress, it can form an abscess, a pocket of pus that might require surgical drainage. Even more serious is when the infection reaches the bone, causing osteomyelitis or bone infection. This is particularly dangerous because bone infections are difficult to treat and often require prolonged antibiotic therapy or even surgical removal of the infected bone. The statistics around diabetic foot ulcers are sobering. Of those who develop a foot ulcer, about 6% will be hospitalized due to the infection or other ulcer-related complications. Even more concerning, diabetic foot ulcers are the leading cause of non-traumatic lower limb amputations. But here's what makes this particularly insidious. It doesn't hurt is often the most dangerous symptom. Because neuropathy masks pain, you might have a serious infection brewing without any warning signs that you can feel. The infection could be progressing to deeper tissues, even to the bone, and you might not experience any pain at all. Now that you understand what diabetic foot ulcers are and why they're so dangerous, let's talk about the most important part, how to prevent them. The good news is that most diabetic foot ulcers are preventable with the right knowledge and consistent daily habits. The foundation of prevention is blood sugar control. I can't overstate how important this is. Remember what I said about A1C levels. Every point above normal reduces your healing ability by 10 times. Work closely with your primary care physician or endocrinologist to keep your blood sugar levels as close to normal as possible. This means taking your medication as prescribed, following your recommended diet, and staying active. The next crucial element is daily foot inspection. This should become as routine as brushing your teeth. Since you can't rely on pain to alert you to problems, you need to use your eyes to catch issues early. Here's exactly how to do a proper foot inspection. Find a well-lit area and have a mirror available. You'll need it to see the bottom of your feet. If you can't bend down easily or, or clearly, ask a family member to help you. Start by looking at the tops of your feet and your toes. Look for any cuts, scratches, blisters, or areas of redness. Check for any swelling or changes in color. Next, check between your toes for any cracks, peeling skin, or signs of fungal infection. Now use the mirror to examine the bottom of your feet. Look at your heels, the balls of your foot, and under your toes. Feel your feet with your hands as well as looking at them. Check for any areas that feel warmer than others. Increased temperature can be an early sign of inflammation. Also, feel for any hard spots or calluses that might be developing. What exactly are you looking for? Any change from the day before. If you notice anything unusual, anything that wasn't there yesterday, contact your podiatrist immediately. Proper footwear is absolutely critical. Your shoe should have enough room, about a thumb's width between your longest toe and the end of the shoe. Choose shoes with wide toe boxes, cushioned soles, and smooth linings. Shop for shoes in the afternoon when your feet are at their largest. Always wear socks and never go barefoot, even around the house. For foot hygiene, wash your feet daily with mild soap and warm water. Test the water temperature with your elbow. It should be no warmer than 90 degrees. Dry your feet thoroughly, especially between your toes. Apply moisturizing cream, but avoid putting it between your toes, where it can trap moisture. Keep your toenails trimmed straight across, but if you have trouble seeing or reaching your feet, have a podiatrist do this for you. Don't try to remove calluses yourself. Have them professionally treated. Exercise is beneficial for circulation and blood sugar control but choose low impact activities like walking, swimming, or cycling. Check your feet before and after exercise for any sign of irritation. If you smoke, quit. Smoking further reduces circulation and significantly impairs healing. See a podiatrist regularly, even if you don't have current problems. Annual comprehensive foot examinations can catch issues early. No one to seek immediate medical attention any open sore, sign of infection like redness or drainage, red streaking from a wound, fever with foot problems, or wounds not healing within a few days. Remember, having diabetes doesn't mean you're destined for foot problems. With proper care and daily habits, you can keep your feet healthy for life. If you found this information helpful, please share this video on social media. Your simple share could help a friend or family member get the early treatment they need. 
Don't forget to order your free book at www.footulcerbook.com, which is full of information about diabetic foot ulcers that can save your feet or the feet of your loved ones. Your feet carry you through life. Take care of them with daily attention and professional guidance. Prevention is the best medicine, and when it comes to diabetic foot ulcers, an ounce of prevention is truly worth a pound of cure. If you're experiencing any of the symptoms we discussed today, don't wait for them to get worse. Early evaluation and treatment can make all the difference in your outcome. You can schedule an appointment with me by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss the next video in our series. We'll see you next time and remember, your feet carry you through life, so take good care of them. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.